you are most welcome again to another episode of HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. A while back, R. Kelly was convicted on 6 out of 13 counts in a Chicago trial amidst controversial arguments, after the Chicago federal judge caused him additional charges when he ignored what the indictment said. While the indictment suggested that R. Kelly must have coerced the said victims to be found guilty of several additional counts of enticement, the district judge chose to do the impossible, breaking down a count which is supposed to be the finest form of a charge in legal standards. While the indictment suggested that R. Kelly did entice and coerce the alleged victims, the Chicago jury was convinced that R. Kelly coerced no body, and so one of them raised their hand to ask the judge how they should go about these particular counts of enticement and coercion. Judge Leinenweber immediately responded without even thinking through and said for as long as he is guilty of one thing, then automatically he becomes guilty of the other. Now that is joking about with someone's life. When someone's freedom is on the line like that, Every word counts. You don't rob them of what's likely their only opportunity to regain their freedom so carelessly like that, just because you the judge want the case closed in a certain way. If only the judge had taken time to think through this controversial counts and made the right and obvious decision which was to declare a mistrial, R. Kelly would have had a number of counts scrapped off his charge sheet at least until further notice. This would have made a very huge difference considering he had already been found not guilty for the majority of counts. It is for such reasons that we wonder what the February sentencing is all about, sending an innocent man to prison for additional years to the 30 that have already been issued in the New York trial which is also equally questionable. Meanwhile, even the other counts of CP were all based on nothing else but speculations. There is no way video evidence should be admissible to be used in court when its source and chain of transfer are not known. Considering the said tape evidence is said to have been deposited into someone's mailbox by an anonymous source, it leaves the source of the evidence undetermined and this by law disqualifies the video. The question is how did the court determine that whatever was on the tape with no source was filmed by R. Kelly? There is just too many speculations and inferences involved in the Chicago case that until now we wonder what the judge will be sentencing for come the 23rd of February this year 2023. How we thought we had gone past the era when false judgments would hold and such important aspects of justice were overlooked, and that our country now had an effective justice system that can automatically detect malicious intent and stop it. This Chicago case against R. Kelly along with the New York trial have exposed our justice system as non-objective, and how it's being run on basis of speculations and inferences. While inferences may be acceptable in trial deliberations, an inference is only applicable when there is no other possible alternative to the theory. In R. Kelly's case for example, maybe there was filming done. That we don't know but there is no guarantee that what was on the tape evidence was filmed by R. Kelly, especially since the tape origin cannot be traced back to him through the mailbox and anonymous sender theory introduced by a one Jim Deerogatis, the journalist who even when called upon refused to take the stand and testify. His testimony was very crucial in making us understand the source of the said tape evidence, but when he adamantly refused to testify, even the district judge defended his refusal. Why would he even do that? While Jim Dirigatis calls it normal policy to ensure free reporting by journalists, this said tape evidence could either uphold R. Kelly's case or lead to a dismissal of the entire case. It's therefore a matter of life and death for another citizen and the least Irrigatis could have done was take the stand like he did back in the 2008 case trial to defend his video production. You do not receive a tape, edit the clips in a way of evidence tampering, and later submit it to the feds to use in a trial that could see another citizen locked up like it's happening for R. Kelly, and then deliberately refuse to show up in court to explain its source and defend its authenticity. That is exactly what Irrigatis did. It's clear that the case against R. Kelly has been filled with a lot of malice and prejudice, but for some reason, the judges are quick to issue the harshest of sentences. They are not stopping at interfering with the jurors' decisions, but also issuing 30 years and over as if R. Kelly murdered someone. The prosecutors too after the Chicago ruling was read were anxious to ask for 90 years in total to be served consecutively. In my heart I said to myself, only in their dreams will they get that 
The people against Arkelia prove to us that they will do anything in their power to get him as many years as they possibly can in prison. But the good news is that there is nothing permanent and irreversible when it comes to legal matters. They ought to remember that Arkeli is no longer underrepresented like it was the case during the early days of this case. He now has a fully equipped legal team that will help him win his battles. They should have learned this looking at what transpired in the Chicago trial. They thought New York was going to repeat itself and see them get a landslide win but this never happened. And now with Andrew Wyatt joining his legal team, we will be watching to see how the government continues to play their usual unfair game. According to Luke Constant, Opinions and speculation should not be allowed to be used dominantly against pure evidence. Opinions should not be the basis for injustice to be tolerated. The evidence in Robert's case clearly says he is innocent, but because of opinions from people like Kim Fox and her colleagues in the district attorney's office, the courts are giving her time to try and find something against the king of R&B. They are therefore keeping him locked up without a justified and legal reason as there was no reason and evidence to lock him up in the first place, but for the pleasure of liars who have since confessed they lied, and even explained why they chose to lie. While it's time for the prosecutors to enjoy their turn on the stage and play the tunes for everyone else to dance, a time is coming when the truth shall prevail and R. Kelly will be vindicated. According to many names, it's sad to note that America has lost their moral authority to lecture the rest of the world on matters of justice and human rights. Now that it's America trampling on their own citizens, one may wonder what's likely to happen in the banana republics where the leaders who would think we cannot do this to people because America is watching are going to do to their damn citizenry. It's going to be difficult for the US to regulate the rest of the world, a self-proclaimed position and role they have enjoyed for the past decades. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.